Okay, so in my lab we want to understand how the very early mammalian embryo forms and how it grows. And we like to use imaging technologies to study the early embryo because we can now put embryos on a microscope stage and make movies as these embryos grow and as cells interact with each other to form different structures. Now one question we tried to answer in this study was when and how the cells of the early embryos start choosing their different fates or early lineage identities. We knew that early cell fate decisions require the action of transcription factors. These are the proteins that regulate gene expression by binding on and off to the DNA. But the problem is that when we look at the expression patterns of many transcription factors that are important in the early embryo, we found that many of them are expressed in all cells at very high levels. And this is why when we wonder that maybe these proteins are controlling cell fate not only by establishing differences in their total levels inside the cell, but maybe more at the more dynamic level or in the more dynamic way in which these proteins bind on and off to the DNA, which could be different between cells uh, during early stages of development. Now it turned out that we didn't have useful technologies to study how transcription factors bind to DNA in single cells. And this is when we started to collaborate with a group of physicists and computational biologists at the University of Buenos Aires in Argentina. And together with them, we borrow some technologies that are called FCS, Fluorescence Correlation Spectroscopy it is. And what you do in an FCS experiment is you make measurements of how proteins bind on and off to the DNA and then you analyze those fluctuations over time and from the analysis of those fluctuations you can actually start quantifying the dynamics or DNA binding properties of the proteins you're looking at and luckily we were able to apply those, those technologies now that so far have been used mostly in cell culture or cell free assays to a living mammalian embryo and what we discover is that even before you can see obvious cell fates in the embryo, even before the cells have adopted different positions, as early as the four cell stage of development, there are already differences in the way some transcription factors are binding to the DNA, specifically a transcription factor that is called SOX2 binds a lot more stably to the DNA in some cells of the embryo than others. And luckily, because we work at the single cell level and with non-invasive technologies, we could continue to make movies of these embryos and ask what happens with those cells later on. And what we found is that the cells in which the transcription factor SOX2 binds more stably to the DNA ends up producing more cells that will become incorporated to the pluripotent inner mass of the embryo. That's actually the group of cells that sit inside the embryo and later generate every cell type of the body. And we can even do mechanistic analysis and try to correlate um, the differences in DNA binding to epigenetic differences between cells at the level of chromatin accessibility. And we discovered that when the chromatin becomes more open, the protein can bind more to the DNA in the cells that are more likely to give rise to the pluripotent inner mass later on. So I think this study is exciting because it shows us that we can start analyzing the mouse embryo in different ways at a more single cell level and start now actually quantifying not only the cellular dynamics but also the molecular dynamics that control some of the very early processes that pattern the living mammalian embryo. Mm -hmm.